Good morning, beloveds. I'm still getting used to the new Sunday routine of get up at six o'clock in the morning and go to the gym. Uh, but it was a good, it was a good, it was a good gym session. So, um, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it and then came home and took a nice shower. So um, it is August 28th. I can't decide if I want the glasses on or the glasses off. Um, our title is Bright and Clear. Our first quote is, let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your God, which is in heaven. And that is Matthew 5, 16. Uh, and Foster is making a cameo there. Um, our second quote is, we must first clarify our own vision. Then we shall become as lights lighting the way for others. And that is Science of Mind, page 435. On large sailing ships, there's a small rudder cut into the main rudder, which is the trim tab and requires only a small amount of energy to turn. When the trim tab, the trib tab, trib tab moves, however, the main rudder also turns and the ship changes course. A little change has a big effect. When we are willing to let our light shine, to live our lives so that others see a difference in us, we become beacons for those who walk in the darkness of fear, despair, hopelessness, and separation. When our vision is clear, we allow God to be the first in our lives. The effect of that clar clarity can be powerful. We cannot always know what impact we as individuals might have on our world, but when we are honest in our relationships, treat others as we would like to be treated and see the Christ in everyone, our light shines brightly and cannot go unnoticed. Our behavior has an effect just as the trim tab affects the ship. When we allow God to come first and not, not only do we find that everything is provided for us, we also help others change their direction and begin to be aware of the divine light within them. May we let our light so shine. Uh, I know that the Christ within me is my light in the world. Today, I let my, my divine light shine out for all to see, and I thank God for this wondrous gift. And that is J.A. Gene Anderson. I know nothing about sailing ships. <laughs> Not a thing about sailing ships. But what I do know, and, it's, and it comes directly from that quote, uh, from the science of mind. We must first clarify our own vision and then we shall become as lights lighting the way for others. So what I'm going to tell you is we are not a prophetizing religion. We do not have missionaries. We do not go knock on doors. You know, we don't do any of that. We don't actively try and recruit members to a point. Um, what we firmly believe in is that if we are living our life, life right, it, as she says later in the, the thing, we are, when we come to trust God and we live our lives in such a way that things that we don't, we don't worry. You know, we just, even when, when stuff is going wrong all around us, we don't worry. We, we, we put our head down, we do our work and we, and we get through, you know, and we trust that it will be okay. Um, and that, that's kind of the secret to a positive person. It's like, it's not that bad things don't happen. It's just that when bad things happen, we know it's going to be okay. We have the strength to get through it. We have the support to get through it, you know, all of that. Um, and so we know that it's not going to stay this way. It's like, we will get through it. Um, so we, we live our lives in such a way that we are authentically ourselves that our, li our life becomes a light and other people see our light and they're naturally drawn to our light because we are, you know, all of the qualities of God. We are happy. We are peaceful. We are joyous. We are, you know, we actually enjoy life and people want to know what our secret is. <laughs> and so then we, so then we could share because they've asked. It's like, we don't go and knock on your door and say, Hey, can we tell you about the word of God? No, we live our lives in such a way that people are naturally drawn to us and they want to know what it is that we know. So they come to us and they go, well, what is it that you know? And then we can share what we know. Do we use 
fancy language sometimes. You got to watch the ministers and the practitioners because we've learned a few fancy terms. But most of the time we just talk. You know, this is how we live our life. This is who we are authentically ourselves. And the best gift about being authentically yourself is you give permission to other people to be authentically themselves. And when they begin to become authentically themselves and when they begin to have an authentic relationship with one themselves and two, the source of their own being, their life gets better. And when their life gets better, the world gets better. So we are not a proselytizing religion. You know, we just live our lives in such a way that we give permission to other people to do it. That is the secret to science of mind. It's like you clarify your vision. You get to know who you are. You get to know who you are in relation to God, who spirit is to you, how spirit works in your life and how you work in spirit. Uh, and you can't help but light the path for others. You know, you can't walk another's path. You can, nobody can walk your path, you know, but we can walk the path. We can carry the lights and we can shine the, the lights that we, that we have on other people's paths so they can see their way more clearly. And it doesn't cost us anything extra. It is simply us being our authentic God-loved selves, you know, spirit-loved selves. This is who we are. That is what, so I like that it's bright and clear. And I like that that, that science of mind quote, first we clarify our own vision. All of the work that is done in science of mind is done within our own person. When you go to a, a science of mind practitioner or minister and ask them to treat for you, they're not treating you. They are treating themselves about you. They are holding the space for you until you can hold it for yourself. It's like you, if you ask me to treat for you whatever it is that you want, then what I am going to do is I'm going to sit down and I am going to know that you are a beloved child of God. And then whatever it is that you ask for, I'm going to know for you. But I'm still treating myself. You know, it, we are a, 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 a spiritual teaching, um, a spiritual way of living in which we get ourselves right with our relationship with God. And then we give, and then we hold that space for you to do it too. I don't want to say we give you permission because, you know, you don't need our permission to get right with God, but we hold the space for you to do that too. It's like, we want you to understand that you could be whole and happy and joyous and peaceful and creative and all of those amazing things. Because the, the, all of that already exists within you and it's up to you to, to pull it out. That's why I like the phrase, happiness is an inside job. Heaven is an inside job. It starts here and it starts here. And we use those two to bring it out to the, to the material world. We are literally divine channels. We are what brings God out into this world. You know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, and, and I, and I like the fact that she points out that, that, that trim tab in the rudder, uh, that tiny little change can literally change the direction of your, of your ship. And sometimes that's all it is. Just that tiny little idea, you know, that you are a beloved child of God, you'll make different choices. You will make different, you will say different things. You will do different things. Um, when you feel like you're loved your whole world can change your whole world can change and that that's really what's amazing so um yeah it's cool it's cool all right um let me flip back into the book to see if there's anything that i really missed and then we have to decide on a mission although i think the last line in the reading is probably the best mission um let your let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your spirit, which is in heaven. We must first clarify our own vision. Then we shall become as lights, lighting the way for others. And it says lighting the way for others. We're not walking the way for others. We are not trying to convince them. All we are doing is shining a light on the path and saying, there is a way in front of you. There is a way in front of you, you know. 
We're not creating the way in front of them. It was already there. What we're doing is we're helping to shine a light going, look, you have a choice. There is a path in front of you. Don't be afraid to walk it because you're not going to walk it in the dark. I will walk beside you. We'll always walk beside you. Um, okay. When we are willing to let our light shine, to live our lives so that others see a difference in us, we become beacons for those who walk in the darkness of fear, despair, hopelessness, and separation. When our vision is clear and we allow God to be first in our lives, the effect of that clarity can be powerful. We can't always know. We can't always know the impact that we will have on people. Um, the, with the mobile food market that we did yesterday, we saw it, we saw it, you know, the number of people who said, thank you. The number of people who said, God bless you. The number of people who, you know, and, but not everybody did, you know, sometimes they had those tinted windows. They never rolled that window down. Um, and some of them did like we saw firsthand the difference that the impact that we were making, it's a temporary impact, but hopefully it's a temporary impact which can lead to more permanent. They know that there are people out there that not only want to help, but can while we work for a world where we don't have to do that kind of work, where everybody is, you know, well fed, their needs are met. That's the world we're working for. But until that time comes, we're going to, we're going to do the work and we're going to impact those lives. Okay. So it's a nebulous one. The mission today is to let our light so shine. What does that mean? The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to let our light so shine. What does it mean? It means be who you are. Be the beloved child of God that you are. Be that loving, kind, compassionate, joyous, because sometimes we don't see enough of that. Joyous, happy person that you are. Let that joy shine. Let that happiness through, you know, when things are sad, sometimes what you need is to see somebody who is happy to be reminded you'll be that way again too. So I know it's a strange mission. It's a nebulous mission. It's whatever you make of it, but I trust you. I trust you to figure it out. I trust you to figure out how to let your light so shine. All right. Um, I'm going to move into the process of my day. You've got your mission. I'm as always going to remind you to do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, big, small, does not matter. Point is to do it. It is a spiritual practice. Uh, it is about making sure that you are taking care of yourself. And it is about making sure that you're enjoying something in your life. I hope you're enjoying a lot in your life, but something, you know, make it a point to engage all five senses in something. Take a walk, take a nap. Enjoy a really good meal, whatever it looks like to you. All right. Um, I didn't get much of a catter day with the cat, so I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a catter day on Saturday or on Sunday, um, and really spend some time with them today. So, um, take care of yourself, you know, please do create that habit. Can't pour from an empty cup. So, um, as always, do something you engage your mind and your body, unless it's your day of rest, because I do encourage you to take that. Uh, drink plenty of water. Oh my God, I drank so much water yesterday, <laughs> and it probably still wasn't enough. Uh, but I don't have muscle cramps, so I, I clearly got enough in. Um, and then, there was, uh, oh, early in, early in your day, bright light, reset the circadian rhythms, and open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around you because it is an inside out job. It starts here. It starts here. This is where heaven is. It is a connection to the source of your own being. That's where it starts. And then you channel that out into the material world. You're a divine channel of love. So uh, take him and this advice. Look for the good and praise it. That's a great place to start. Um, gratitude feels good. You know, the number of times that people said thank you to me yesterday and then the number of times that I said thank you back. Oh, it's like, I'm not saying you're welcome. No, I'm saying thank you because yeah, yeah. 
All right. Um, we, uh, I, there's something here that I'm supposed to say. Have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a Sunday, um, a rest day or get stuff done day, a magical day, an enchanting day, an enchanted day, a good day. That is too much pressure. Simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always and forever. All right, beloveds. Um, we are going to have an amazing service for you on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. so soon. And then Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. And I will be back with you around 9 a.m. So y'all take care of yourselves. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time. <laughs>